Okay, so now we have another uh, video from the Youth Athletic and Development League, um, an informational video. And today we're going to talk about the uh, what, what equipment you want to get for your player. I've had a couple parents ask me, this is the first year my kid has played volleyball, um, what do they need to play volleyball? So I decided to go ahead and make a video about it. I usually break it down to four basic uh, categories. You have your basics, the things that you, you need. Um, recommended stuff would be stuff that I, I think you, you really need, um, but I'm not going to really, you know, I would never set up a rule about you needing it for sure. Um, your upsell would, would be stuff that I either fall in basic and recommended except for better versions of those items, um, which, you know, would be an upsell, and I'm not, and I'm not saying you need to spend the money. In fact, I'm a big proponent of not spending any money until you're for sure that that your kid's going to play volleyball for quite some time. And I'll stress that a couple times throughout the video. So, and then lastly, frills, which are really just frivolous little things that make the game more fun for the kids, but you just buy it if you want. So let's get started. Um, so we're going to start off with basics, and what's more basic than your shoes? Um, my requir requirement is that the kids wear sports shoes um, when they play. Um, don't want them showing up in saddle shoes, boat shoes, or flats. No dress shoes, tap shoes, high heels. Not going to want to see any work boots, army boots, or cowboy boots. Bicycle shoes, ballet shoes, climbing shoes are all no-goes. I don't want to see any track spikes, water shoes, golf shoes. No sandals, no slippers, no flip-flops. So I'm obviously joking around here, but I've actually seen a couple of these different shoes show up at practices before. Um, so... I just want to see sports shoes for practice and games. The big thing for me that's besides them just being sports shoes is that I like them to have non-marking soles because they have marking soles. They leave black marks on the, on the floor and then either I've got to clean all the marks up or the schools are not going to be happy with me when they come and see their, their gym floor all marked up. So if you go buy some shoes, just ask the salesperson for non-marking soles. If you have a pair of shoes already that, that they're going to wear, just have your child put the shoes on and go and kind of try to scuff a, a floor up a little bit. If they leave a mark, then I'm going to ask that you go buy some non-marking shoes. If they don't leave a mark, then we're great. We're good to go. So let's move on to the next thing that I would like to see the kids have for a practice and actually it's the only other thing there's only really three things actually that I, I kind of want them to have so when they're playing uh, volleyball they're all likely going to go down to their knees a couple times to bump the ball without knee pads on that can be painful and it'll make your child unhappy so in order to avoid this I'm asking that we have knee pads um, at least for starters. Uh, as they get older, they may not wear them. I don't personally wear knee pads. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. It's just how I just played all my life. Um, but I definitely think at this young of an age, we need to wear knee pads so that when they go bump the ball, there's no pain. Your child's happy. And when your child's happy, we're all happy. So knee pads kind of fall into two categories. You have your really thick knee pads that provide a lot of protection. And then you have skinnier knee pads that still protect your knees quite well, but just not quite as protecting as the other pad, knee pads. As you can see, much less thick. Now, my recommendation for your knee pads is that you take your, your child to the store and you buy knee pads with them. And you buy what they want. To, to an extent. I mean, 
knee pads shouldn't cost more. You get a, a pair of knee pads for, I think, like 10 bucks. Um, you can also spend a lot more than that if you're going to get like the super duper Under Armour brand new stretchy things I've seen out there. Um, so, yeah, you know, to an extent, buy what they want. What I'm talking about is, is that I've noticed that a lot of the people who have the thicker knee pads, they don't particularly care for them. So they end up shoving them down to their ankles and they just stay down there for the, for the entire game, which neglects your knees. It just, you might as well not be wearing anything. So if your child's more comfortable wearing the skinnier knee pads, they may not protect their knees quite as well as the thick ones, but they might be more apt to wear them. So I would take a kid with you so you can find some knee pads that they'll actually keep on. So then the last thing we're going to talk about that I consider a basic would be the shorts. Um, your shorts can be just sports shorts, so running shorts or soccer shorts or basketball shorts these are the uh, shorts that i'm i'm suggesting there will be one more kind of shorts that may happen which i'm not suggesting but we'll get into that in a second uh, what makes good sports shorts to me is an elastic uh waistband with a drawstring so that they can stay up and and around your waist and still give you movement. Um, I also recommend that your shorts go above your knees. It should be two to three inches from the bottom of the shorts to the, your knees because when your shorts go over your knees it interferes with you being able to bend your knees. Um, so I recommend shorter shorts. Um, I know a lot of uh, boys like to wear their shorts long um, but two to three inches above their knee is still pretty long. Uh, so those are my recommendations. Now the other kind of shorts that I'm not suggesting, but I'm going to talk about only because it might be a short that some of the kids want to wear, are the spandex. Now the idea behind spandex is that they are really, you know, because they are so tight, they don't interfere with your movement at all. And that is why competitive volleyball players wear them. So if your children go on to play volleyball, in middle school and high school and definitely club ball this is the kind of shorts that they're probably gonna wear um, now I don't think kids at this age need to wear them however I have run into the situation where a lot of seventh grade girls want to wear what the older girls are wearing so if they're paying attention and they see that the high school girls are wearing the spandex they may want to wear spandex. I'm leaving that up to the coaches. This is the first of a couple things I'm leaving up to the coaches, uh, players, and definitely the parents. Uh, uh, you know, the parents usually have the final say in everything. So I'm just putting that out there that those are there too, but I would stick with the soccer, running, and uh, basketball shorts. Now, you'll notice that all my shorts are black. I didn't do that by accident. I would recommend black shorts um, that go with every color so even before you know what color your team is it works so that's what that's that's why I would go with black now as far as things that you don't want to wear uh, capris cargo shorts khakis and jean shorts they're just not that I just don't like to see them on a volleyball court um, they interfere with movement they you know, some of them, you know, like cargo pants have got things on them that can hurt people, you know, much like the, the jewelry and the, uh, the, uh, hair breadths. They can scratch somebody. So I would prefer not to see any of those on the court. I, I, I just stick with the sports shorts. So now we're going to move into recommended. And the first thing that I'm going to recommend is a, is a volleyball. You don't need, your, your child does not need to show up with a volleyball. We will have volleyballs for the team. My my plan is to get three volleyballs per team. Um, so they don't have to bring a volleyball. However, like anything else, 
You're not going to get good at a sport if you only practice it at practice. You've got to practice at home. So I recommend getting a cheap volleyball that you can play around with at home and you know bounce off the side of the, the garage or the side of the house outside and you don't really care about it getting damaged. Now volleyballs, like anything else, come in a, in a variety of prices. You can pay anything from eight to, I've actually seen five dollar balls that actually are not that bad. Unlike this eight dollar ball, which this eight dollar ball is no good. Um, up to, you can pay eighty dollars for a ball. Um, do not buy an expensive ball. First off, those expensive balls are not for everyday play. Um, and number two, if you buy an expensive ball, you're afraid to use it, right? You're not going to take a $50 ball outside and beat it off the side of the house to practice with. You will take a $15 ball out there and do that. And so a cheap ball kind of gives you the freedom to, to practice. Um, and, to, and sometimes the expensive balls aren't even all that, that great, to be honest with you. I mean, let's, let's look at these uh, these two balls here. We have two Mikasa balls. Um, they look similar. However, the one on the left is ten dollars. The one on the right is seventy dollars. I actually know some people who like the ten dollar ball better than the seventy dollar ball. Um, when that seventy ball dollar ball first came out, everybody was all excited about it because it looks really cool and it's it's a new ball and it was uh, and it's the official ball of the FIVB. Um, so I knew a lot of people went out and bought the, the ball. And um, within a couple months, they didn't play with it anymore because that is a very hard ball. It actually hurts to play with. Um, so just paying a lot of money for a ball doesn't mean it's a good ball. So I'm going to try to give you an idea of what kind of ball we're looking for. Um, they come in, like I said, all kinds of prices. You have your cheap balls. And of these cheap balls, only one of them really is not that great of a ball. Uh, so this would be probably rule number one for picking out a volleyball. You want your volleyball to have seams. The one that's right there, the $8 ball, is basically a big plastic ball with black lines on it to make it look like it has seams. Um, you just want a soft ball, to be honest. I mean, when you buy a ball, you want to look for something that's kind of soft. A hard plastic feeling ball is probably not going to be the ball you want. Um, these other two cheap balls are much better. Um, the MVEA 350 is okay. Um, however, the Wilson Soft Play, I, I have to give it some pretty good thumbs up. Um, that seems to be the ball that most of the uh, girls who start playing volleyball buy, and they bring it to practice, and it it's just fine. It's not one of the balls I've, I've seen balls get brought to practice where, you know, nobody ever plays with them. You know, once we get to playing practice, everybody grabs the more expensive balls, and they, they throw the cheap ball to the side. The soft play, everybody picks it up and plays with it. Um, it feels pretty good. So if I was going to recommend a cheap ball to buy, the soft play would be a nice one to get. Um, then your next level up are your middle range balls. These balls are usually used for practice. Um, you know, they're $30, $35. You know, uh, the volley light. Is the ball that we're going to be using for games in our in our league and it's also the ball i'm going to try to get like three of them per team that's my my goal um, the uh, 5wsc is actually probably the most popular ball out there um, if you go watch a high school practice or a club volleyball practice 99 percent of the balls are going to be the 5w's and then finally we look at our top balls and these are game balls. That's what exactly what they are. You you know the like I said the 200 there is the official ball for sand volleyball, um, and that's what you're going to play your games with. And the the soft touch, um, it's an 80 dollar ball, but that's the ball that the USVBA wants you to use to uh, play tournaments. And I'll give you an example. I own about five of soft touch balls and they've never seen practice they've never been to a practice they've only been used during tournaments when I throw tournaments I own about 20 of the uh, five W's you know and that's what we practice with 